Namaste and a very good morning, Mzanzi. A wholehearted welcome to Sadna. I am Alisha Gai Prasad, your host, bringing to you South Africa's most exceptional Hindu magazine show, right here on S3. Join us as we traverse the barriers of the global pandemic to unravel the purpose of Sadhana today. Yes, today we bring to you a very special documentary on an organization of saints, a growing spiritual organization that looks beyond the isms, finding a common denominator of spiritual values in people to unite mankind as saints on an earthly plane. This is the Sant Nirankari Mission. With its headquarters in a serene campus set amid the hustle and bustle of India's capital city, New Delhi, this mission of universal brotherhood, as it is also known, identifies itself as an all-embracing movement dedicated to human welfare. Having found roots in our country as well, Sadna looks into the beliefs of this mission, its founding history and the role it plays in promoting saints of the formless God. As a lotus flower arises from the murky waters, pure, fragrant and ushering in a new day, so too does the Sant Nirankari mission in Delhi emerge amongst the hustle and bustle of the city, encouraging us in a direction of peace, deep love and knowledge of God. It evolves the concept of one earth, one family and demystifies spirituality to promote and celebrate unity in diversity. Sant Nirankari Sant means saint in English and Nirankari means formless. So when we say Sant Nirankari mission, it's a mission. It's not a sect, it's not a religion. It's a mission to awaken our soul, to connect one soul with the Supreme Soul. This is exactly what Sadhguru is doing. And this is what exactly from the ages we have seen prophets and gurus doing the same. Introduction to the seeker is we give them divine knowledge. We show them God. It's a very purpose of human life is to know God, know self. The one who is not self-aware cannot be at peace. And the one who is not at peace cannot contribute peace to others. So his life becomes useful only and only when he becomes useful to the society by means of divine knowledge. The purpose of this Sannakari mission is to show Nankar, formless God. And the one who sees it is known as Nankari. Very simple. This we are dealing with the knowledge of formless God. Formless God means Niraka, having no form. So this mission is this mission is known by its activity. We are showing God, which has no form. It is Nirgar. So, so the mission has given this name, San Nankari Mission. Saints of the formless God. Many, many decades back, Baba Avtar Singh Ji had a vision to convert this piece of land into a spiritual, into a spiritual landmark place. This used to be a, a marshland, a salty marshland where there were only bushes around and it used to flood every year. And one of the saints, one of the disciples of our Sadhguru, his name is Bhai Santok Singh Ji, he was then asked to look after this land. It is him and many other devotees then dedicated their life in converting, converted this marshland into what we see today is a spiritual center. So there we have quite a number of things. In fact, it has become one of the tourist destinations in Delhi also. So it has a beautiful fountain, which we call it as fountain of oneness, where we have a human uh, formation, where all the those human formation are holding hands, giving a message of uh, human uh, unity, universal brotherhood. And it was his dedication, his hard work, and till date, the Sarovar has his name attached to it. So we call it the Santok Sarovar. When Baba Avtar Singh Ji acquired this land, it was a mere saltish marshland. 
Bhai Santok Singh Ji started to develop it under his divine guidance and constructed a pond. Then Baba Gurbachan Singh Ji used the land for agricultural and dairy farming. After that, the transformation continued and today we can experience this astonishing fountain of peace. Sandarankari mission was started in the year 1929 in the city Peshawar, which is part of Pakistan now, by Baba Bhuta Singh Ji. And thereafter, Baba Bhuta Singh Ji gave Kyan this imparted this knowledge of this one supreme being to Baba Aftar Singh Ji. And it is then that when Baba Aftar Singh Ji got this Kyan, he took this message with the permission of his Sadhguru and started spreading this message to the masses. This omnipresent God, and from Baba Aftar Singh Ji, it went to Baba Guru Bachan Singh Ji, our third Guru in the line, and then from there Baba Hardev Singh Ji, which took this mission to outside India in many, many countries all across, and then Sadhguru Mata Savinda Ji, and today Sadhguru Mata Sudiksha Ji Maharaj, who has been actually bestowing this gyan to millions all across the world. So what Guru does is, in Sandarankari mission, our Guru has given us this Brangyan, the God realization has bestowed us with this Gyan to realize this one supreme being which is all around us, the omnipresent God. This is what Satguru has blessed us. This Gyan or divine knowledge, the voice of truth first raised by Baba Buddha Singh Ji, was resisted by many outside of the mission. The rapid progress sometimes upset these elements to the level of desperation. Congregations were disturbed at many places. Violent attacks were also reported from several centers. It seemed that this supreme knowledge indeed came with a price. Our Satguru, the third Satguru, Baba Gurubachan Singh Ji Maharaj was assassinated. So Baba Hardev Singh Ji took over the reins of the mission. And when he took over the reins of the mission, the world was wanting to know what he wants to do. The first sentence he said was that it will not be blood for blood. The blood should not flow in drains but in veins. So the reply we give is with love we will hold donation camp, blood donation camps everywhere and help the needy who cannot afford blood. The mission is doing this seva for years and we have a blood uh, bank also. And a mission of oneness finds another expression of love when we donate blood and make blood relation through blood donation. Ever since 1986, Baba Ji, when he gave the slogan, human blood should flow in veins and not in drains, lakhs of units of blood has been donated by the mission, not only in India, but globally. Sant Nirankari Mission is an all-embracing spiritual movement dedicated towards self-realization and human welfare. The mission is also involved into many social activities and which comes obviously automatically as we realize that we are all one family, we are all children of one God. So you get that feeling to help other people around. So a lot of social activities are being managed from there as our Satguru is also there and the administration is there, so we would do food drives, blood donation drives all across the world from various chapters, the volunteers would do that. Even now during COVID time, as uh, people are suffering, so many of our centers all around the country in India have been converted into COVID centers. And a few congregations, we are promoting uh, children to attend congregations. Uh, we, we have a segment called the English medium uh, satsangs, the English medium congregations for the youth to know the mission and for the people who cannot understand the mother tongue of uh, India, they can also, they can learn. This 
this particular building where you are, this was brought up by uh, Baba Hardev Singh Ji Maharaj and uh, the previous uh, Sadhguru of uh, Santanirankari. He was heading the Santanirankari mission. He headed the mission for 36 years. So this complex was uh, his uh, brainchild and he executed, planned everything he got done under his supervision. So this is a boon for all of us for years to come this place is going to be remembered. And as you said about the tranquility, the peace, the bliss, as soon as you step in from the materialistic world to this complex, this has come over through ages. The lake that you call the Sarovar, we call it the Santok Sarovar. This was by the second uh, Sadhguru of Santanirankari mission. The first was Baba Bhuta Singh Ji. The second was Shahenshah Baba Avtar Singh Ji. So this was during his era that this Santok Sarovar came up. He shifted to this area after moving from Pahar Ganj. The landscape parks are a recreational area for families and people who walk in the morning. It has a calm and serene atmosphere where devotees wind down and de-stress from their busy lives. Surrounded by this beautiful park, the Sarova contains holy water. Many devotees use the Sarova during the annual Nirankari spiritual meetings. The outer cleansing ritual at the Holy Lake only complements their more important observance of their five holy vows. These five vows are asked by Satguru before the Gyan is imparted, before the realization is given. And these five vows doesn't restrict us in our life. In fact, it liberates us. It's, it makes us a better human being. So we have our first vow, where the mission say that your mind, body, and all your worldly possessions, from now on, you would consider it as a gift of God. You will not consider it as, as your own. The second vow, what our Satguru has taken from all of us, before we were given this gyan is that from now on, we will not judge and criticize people based on their religion, caste or creed. That was the second vow. The third vow which we all took was that we will not judge and criticize people based on their habits of wearing clothes or the food which they eat. It's all there. It all depends on where they are born, what families, what cultures they are born. So we will not judge. If we don't like something, we don't do that. But we won't criticize people and judge people based on their eating habits and the kind of clothes they wear. The fourth vow is that after this gyan is given, we will still carry on doing our social responsibility. It's not that we can now see God all around us, that we will go away from all or escape from our responsibility. You know, someone is a son, someone is a wife, someone is a father. We'll carry on doing our duties. We'll live in the world and enjoy all these things but at the same time being connected with this Narankar, God Almighty. And the fifth vow which Satguru has given, this Gyan which is being imparted, we can only share it with the permission of Guru. So these are the five vows and practically if you see these five vows is the need of the hour. Tolerance, it's difficult, but Satguru is teaching us that is why we attend congregations, it's like attending classes. We have to revise our lessons. It's not a magic that we will, uh, over overnight we'll change. We are trying to improvise ourselves according to the teachings every day. We are trying to live by it. And when we live by it, we, it's joyful for our own self. Like Sadhguru says that when you hate somebody, when you have ill feelings for somebody, first you carry those ill feelings in your heart. You trouble yourself for a couple of hours before you extend that hate further. Everybody has a journey in life. So as we move towards enlightenment as we move further we have to enlighten, get enlightened and that enlightenment comes from Brahm Gyan, God knowledge and 
as we move along with this enlightenment we know who we are what is our true identity over the last 90 years of its journey the sant nirankari mission has become a synonym of oneness of love peace tolerance selfless service and compassion the mission seeks to reveal god realization also known as nirankar to all human beings and thus liberate them in the name of devotion to god ek hamesha apne jeevan mein har pal is nirankar ke aasre rehna hai और अपने सब कार्यों को फिर ये इसकी रज़ा में मानते हुए एक बहुत स्मूथली एक वो जो लाइफ के कितने भी ट्रांजेक्शन्स हों वो हो जाते हैं और साथ ही दासी अंतिम एक निराकार से अरदास करते हुए कि बहुत महापुरुषों के भी मैसेजेस आ रहे हैं कि वो कोरोना पॉजिटिव हैं या परिवार में कोई है तो दातार उधर भी हर एक को सेहत बख्शे और दातार सभी में वो बल भी बख्शे कि विश्वास अपना इन समों पे इतने टफ टाइम्स में भी पूरा रखना है वी हैव अबाउट थ्री थाउजेंड ब्रांचेज इन इंडिया एंड अबाउट थ्री हंड्रेड ब्रांचेज अक्रॉस द वर्ल्ड ओवरसीज एवरी वेयर वी हैव ब्रांचेज वेयर दिस मैसेज इज स्प्रेड we take human as a human being but once you are truly human when you are a human you are humble when you are humble you are divine this is the purpose where like there is no sin as great as living in ignorance and there is no sin greater than letting others live in ignorance you may be good person and if you don't share your goodness with others to be at the same level the whole world can not be enjoying the true peace that is the message of the mission the mission has a very clear message to know one believe in one and become one so satguru is giving this knowledge of this one god making us realize that we are all children of this one god and how do we realize it by seeing this one as we see this one god all around us we realize this is the only one there's no space for the other one this is the one which is formless all around omnipresent around us and as we are getting the knowledge as people are coming together doesn't matter what faith we belong to what race we belong to and as people come together they realize their one omnipresent source this god the supreme being all the messages given in the vedas the upanishads bhagavad gita ramayan bible quran adigram they are same in different language but the message is the same the human life is primarily meant for knowing self self means self awareness means peace of mind arjun knew krishna for 32 years but yet he asked him who are you and lord krishna had to say Arjun I am not this body you want to see who I am and then he revealed he gave him the virat so he showed him the virat swarup and this is who I am no sword can cut me no water can make me wet no fire can burn me no air can make me dry he revealed his infinite form he said the sun moon stars everything is inside me and i reside in everything in every single particle in quran it is written that allah khuda is closer than our juggler vein it is closer than eyelashes wo khuda har kis khuda nahi jo waha to hai par yahan nahi jo yahan to hai par waha nahi if we talk about bible jesus christ said god is only present only see and is all around he gave the gospel he made them understand he said i am the kingdom i am the gate to the kingdom of god what was that kingdom where you could enter and just see god all around because god is all around and from any prophet we take from the history everyone has given a message of this one supreme being knowing this one god seeing this god all around us and once you see this god then all the question goes away 
then there is no difference between one religion or another religion because God is the center point of everything. Anybody who visits this place, we have people from various countries, we have people from, of course, around the globe, as I said. Whoever comes, they just want to know that what is the difference? What brings so much of peace? Because we believe in one Lord Master and the Sadhguru. Sadhguru's teachings are teaching us that we have only one Lord Master and we are children of one God and we should not have differences of race, caste, creed. It's universal brotherhood. We all are beings of one God and we have built walls around us. God, God made us as every individual in his own image. upholds the ageless truth that the realization of God through a holy living master is the ultimate goal of human life. When enlightenment is achieved, the shallow divisions of race, caste and creed are obliterated. Peace prevails and human unity flourishes. Only then can the body, mind and soul synchronize in infinite bliss and life truly becomes a celebration.